Okay, this is uh, video number 11. This is the third time I've done this video. I just uh, kept making a couple mistakes. So, gonna do it again this time. And uh, might not be as long, but let's just get to it. Uh, I talked about this helmet. Uh, it's just a cheap Harbor Freight helmet. It's adjustable. I taped it so it doesn't move anymore. I leave it on number nine. You need to be able to see what you're welding, obviously. Uh, wouldn't suggest going any lower than nine, though. You hurt your eyes. Um, building this boat in West Texas, I've probably said that before. I weld, I wear that mask. It's, uh, you know, 103 degrees. It's just brutal. But, uh, the smoke stinks from welding. It's carcinogenic, so wear a mask. It's a good idea. So, since the last video, I managed to scrape together about $6,000. Bought a little bit more material. Uh, I got a total now of about $27,000 in metal. And I was able to finish the bottom of the boat finally with the I beams the way I wanted to. Uh, one thing real quick about this landing craft door, I'm gonna I'm gonna put some one by two going this way between these, one by two rectangle tubing, and then I'm gonna put a piece of uh, eighth inch a sheet over it of eighth inch metal. Because uh, this is a work boat, I want to be able to pull things off the beach and have them easily slide up onto the boat. So there'll be one more piece of metal that completely covers that to uh, make it smooth. So let's walk up in here now. Now this front section right here, this is the only thing that has uh, not been had stiffeners put in it yet. And uh, it won't have any I-beams in it. It's different, you know, it's uh, because of the shape of it. I'm just gonna cut some six inch wide, quarter inch plate and uh, uh, just run it this way several pieces of it and then I will um, Use the one by two rectangle tubing to frame off of that. There'll be a big fish box right here in this area three foot by four foot fish box so getting to the bottom of the boat finally Finally done with it, man. I'm just uh, Was so sick of doing the bottom of the boat because it just was just so intense, but uh, I put uh, Another I-beam down the middle, two more off of it, these two little ones, and then uh, down the sides also. And on the sides there, I also did the, you know, uh, triangular shaped gussets. And uh, just super happy with the way the I-beam stuff worked out. Looking across, this, there's the other side. So it's just, you know, it's just completely bulletproof. Everything's welded all the way. And uh, it's easy to talk about doing it like this, but it's very difficult to do it because it was just a crazy amount of work. So uh, let me stand up here a little bit. And, uh, let's go. We'll just go back here. So, so there's the first bulkhead. And then here's the small space. One reason that this space, I haven't mentioned this before, that this space is only three feet wide is because right there is where the bottom of that sheet stops and this other sheet starts. And right here, this bulkhead covers the other one. It's a three foot offset. And I did that on purpose in the beginning because I didn't want a four corner intersection on the bottom of the boat. But looking back on it now, I wouldn't do that again. I would just go ahead and a four corner intersection is fine, especially if you're talking about, you know, putting a bulkhead over the top of it. You can see it right there. I haven't done anything with it, but yeah, I don't see a problem with the four corner intersection. Uh, if you're talking about, you know, building it this beefy, in the beginning, I was worried about a four corner intersection and that's why I did it like that. So I still need to come in here and I'll probably 
just put a piece of flat bar standing on edge right here on that seam. Now, like I said, the other, the other seam is three feet forward and it's right here and, it, and it's directly underneath this bulkhead. So, I mean, you know, that's incredibly stout there. But uh, anyway, so that's what, that's why this section is only a three foot section. It just kind of worked out like that. And uh, there's the I-beam all the way across and the triangular shape gussets just, I love this I-beam material. I can't say enough about it. You know, it's uh, uh, three inches wide and uh, four inches tall. And it's just incredible on a boat that's this big to use this I-beam, I, I think it's probably by far the best stiffener that you could use on the bottom of a boat. It's just, just incredible. Uh, it looks really professional and uh, it just lays down nice, you know, and uh, you know, if you go to the extreme to put these triangular shaped gussets where it meets everywhere, I mean, uh, don't get much better than that between that and uh you know the bulkheads that i put in this boat let's go on back here uh it's pretty bulletproof here's the transom so we're at the back of the boat I'm just gonna turn around here One thing that I like about these bulkheads in this boat is it creates, there's four bulkheads in the boat. So that creates five different spaces or chambers where if you run up on the rocks and knock a hole in this section right here, that bulkhead and this bulkhead is going to contain that water. I mean, it's going to fill up to the water line of the boat, but that's not going to sink the boat. You know, I've looked at spray flotation. Uh, the you, you mix two different parts and you pour it in. It's not spray in, but you pour it in and it expands huge. The only problem with that stuff is it absorbs water if it ever is allowed to have water lay on it or get to it. And I just don't like that. I originally wanted to do air chambers where I welded a, a sheet of metal completely across these, these, these chambers. But, and that, that will happen up front, but in the, in the cab back here, you know, it's going to have a wood floor back here and stuff like that. And, uh, but up front, yeah, there will be this one deck from, right here from this from this bulkhead forward it's 14 feet to that right there and that's just a piece about nine inches tall standing on edge a piece of plate uh, so this whole area here that will be completely welded and there will be um, uh, holes cut in the side of the boat so any water that comes in will run right out it'll land on this deck and it'll run right out uh the holes and the scuppers um so yeah the front 14 feet will be completely welded but you know uh in this area is going to be gas tank so i still need to be able to look in there so i'm going to use those ports they got these ports that you can uh uh, screw down to the deck and you can unscrew the top of it. They got clear ones. They have black, white, uh, you know, like eight inches in diameter, just so you can take a peek in there and keep an eye on that. Um, in this area here where the fuel tanks are going to be, there's three fuel tanks. I'm uh, probably only going to put two of them in there. That's about 200 gallons, but, uh, you don't want to have something in there like a bilge pump with an automatic float on it because it's, it's a contained area and if fuel leaks from the from the fuel tanks you don't want a bilge pump going off because that electrical spark would you know explode the fuel so that's a that's an area where there'll be no um there'll be no bilge pump in this area now in these other areas in these other four spaces there can be a bilge pump in there with like an automatic float on it uh 
so that works out good but anyway it's a it's a tough decision trying to figure out what you want to do as far as flotation on a boat like this um, I'm gonna, uh, so let me try and get my hair in. I'm not falling in that hole so anyway you know bottom line is uh I could put a I could put a bilge pump in here still need to have an access port where I can look in there and see what's going on because that's going to be completely welded with that you know the deck here um, back to that uh, back to that bilge that that um, that bulkhead so it's basically 11 foot wide by 14 foot this front deck and it will be welded completely with a piece of uh, eighth inch plate for for the floor and scuppers cut into the side so any waves that comes in this area just goes right right out the boat washes out uh, and those so those next spaces one two three those next three spaces because uh, it won't have a deck welded solid it's it's inside the cabin those three spaces I will put three different bilge pumps in those areas with automatic floats on them and uh, I'll, I will still put you know these little service ports it's uh, just a little round port I explained a minute ago they just they're a smooth mount right on the deck you can just kind of unscrew the lid and take a take a look in there uh, they're pretty handy I'm sure you've seen them on lots of boats um, so that is what it is about the flotation you know it's uh, really you know what do you do you know with a boat like this so I like the I like the uh, bulkhead ideas because like I keep saying if you poke a hole in one of these sections it's not gonna flood the boat because these bulkheads are completely welded it's watertight it'll fill up to where the water line is on the outside of the boat and then you don't sink the boat so you flip the boat over you know that's a different story because then you're talking about you just have a 14 foot area up front here that is your air chamber and hopefully that would be enough flotation uh, so you wouldn't lose the boat now the motor shelf that's on the back of the boat is going to be on the back of the boat that's going to be a complete air chamber also so that would also help float float the boat if you were to flip it over uh, you know don't flip your boat over don't be stupid <laughs> you know if uh, the weather calls for a small craft advisory don't go out you know just be smart that's how that's how you uh avoid flipping the boat over i've had lots of boats and never come close to flipping them over now as far as running into rocks you know that that is uh very possible especially in southeast alaska with the dramatic tides and uh so much rocky shoreline but that's the great thing about these bulkheads. You poke a hole in this thing, just this area floods. That area is not going to flood. That area is not going to flood. That area is not going to flood. So we have five different compartments. And uh, in my opinion, that's that's pretty good. This is the first one. That would be a fish, fish box in this one. That one right there is going to have the fuel tanks in it. And then those three those three last areas there those those uh those areas will be inside the cabin so that is what that is let's push on here i'm at 14 minutes already uh next thing to do is uh, i'm going to uh weld this walk around all the way around and get ready to uh lift this boat up onto the trailer take it to uh, where I work. I work for Frank's International. My boss told me I could use a forklift to flip this thing over, flip it over upside down on the trailer, bring it back to my shop here, weld the bottom of the boat, take it back to the yard, flip it back over, and then it'll be right side up and I'll leave it on the trailer in the shop here and start building the cabin. Uh, uh, let me talk about this. I don't talk much about uh, welding aluminum, but I want to mention this. Uh, you know it's 105 103 degrees outside and in the afternoons i noticed that um, uh, this metal gets really hot it's almost like preheating and so my welder you know uh, welding aluminum is a spray arc so 
there's a wide range of adjustability there on you know exactly how much of a spray arc a complete spray arc I don't like a complete spray arc because I like to try and control the puddle with uh, trying to get that stack of dimes look you know what I'm talking about so in the heat of the day I notice that this metal gets hot and the welder is hot and so I'll actually turn it down I'll go down from like 21 uh, and 400 on the wire speed to 20 and that helps a lot because then I've you know I'm welding a little bit colder but not cold but where I can actually shape the weld uh, by working the bead the puddle and uh, you know it's really interesting after you weld so much uh, you 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 see these little things going on I mean in the heat of the day, this metal's so hot you can't hardly put your hands on it, even though it's underneath this shop door, this the shop inside the shop. Uh, it's just a little tidbit I, I'm gonna, you know, mention there. It's uh, something I actually just kind of figured out a couple days ago. You know, I was, uh, it's weird. Everything will be good early in the morning. Everything will be dialed in good. I got a spray arc, but not a complete spray arc, and I can work the bead good. And then in the afternoon, it's like, boom, it's like a complete spray arc, like literally spraying spray paint out of a spray can. There's just nothing you can do to control and to kind of shape the stack of dimes look. So uh, I finally figured it out, you know, I uh, turned the heat down on the welder a little bit, gave me back that control that I need to, uh, to uh, shape the weld and try, and try and get that stack of dimes look. And uh, so that's just uh, something that I thought was interesting I throw in there. Okay, so we're at like 17 minutes. I think I mentioned everything like I said. This is the third time I've done this video, so uh, I think I mentioned everything. Uh, if you have any comments on anything, uh, drop them down there. I appreciate it. You know, uh, I don't know everything by far. I'm not the best welder in the world. I've been welding since I was a kid. Never had a professional job as a welder, but uh, yeah, if you got any comments or anything, just drop it down there. I appreciate it. All right, thanks for watching.